Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, we're building an active shooter response bag. As many of you know, there was recently an active shooter on a subway line. And if you watch any of those news stories or see any images posted on social media, you'll notice that there are a lot of civilians trying to do good for these patients that have been shot in various appendages. Unfortunately, in almost every single one of these photos, what we see are very ineffective improvised tourniquets. A shirt knotted over the leg is not going to stop bleeding from a femoral artery. Now, somebody that's trained in improvising tourniquets can take a windlass and make that effective. However, we still do a really bad job of it. And that's why I'm always a proponent of carrying around commercial grade products. So what I'm showing you today is an example of an active shooter response bag. Now, this isn't a first aid kit. This has no over-the-counter meds. This has no really minor wound items. This is purely for your major bleeds and major life threats. While I'm labeling it active shooter response bag, this will work to stop life threats in a variety of different situations, whether that's an active shooter. If you're in a European country where stabbings are way more prevalent, then this will be for a violent perpetrator in that regard. It can be for somebody in cardiac arrest or a car accident that has major bleeding. And really what it focuses on are preventable causes of death. So obviously I don't have stuff in here to crike the guy that doesn't have a head anymore from a shotgun blast or something like that because I don't think that's realistic for most people. Now, for a lot of civilians, this kit is going to be a little bit overkill. It might not be something you want to carry all the time. Perhaps something like this is something you'd be more apt to carry in your car or put at your desk ready to go in case something happens or even just bring on a commute if you're in a really crowded area. But I don't want this to be like this is what every civilian needs to be carrying because I think there's other ways to carry some of this equipment. What I have in front of you is the Essential Sling by uh, Vertex. Now, I like Vertex. I've got a code for them. You can get some money off. And they do make some really good purpose-built products. This sling, any other sling they make will work for this, as well as uh, any backpack they have. It all depends on the size you want. But also, there are some other manufacturers that make great things. And if you can't afford a purpose-built pack for something like this, then you can really use any backpack. Just be aware that it might not be as ergonomic to get some of the supplies or hold things quite uh, how you want them to be held. So this is a pretty small sling. I'll leave the dimensions up there and we'll kind of get into the main reasons why I like this as a response kit. Number one, I like the bright color. I don't want to be super tactical running into a building because the dude that's all tacked out in their plate carrier and their truck gun um, is probably going to get shot by law enforcement the second they arrive on scene because they're going to look a lot like that active shooter. Uh, actually, Rogue Rescue, who I follow on Instagram, has a great article about truck guns and why we don't want to do them. I want something that's non-threatening that I can just take with me uh, on the subway, on a bus, and nobody's going to think anything of this orange and gray pack. Now, in the uh, front of this, I have a really quick, I think it's called a Rescue Me. It's just a small uh, window punch that will allow us to get through car windows. You know, you can't take a crowbar to a car window and expect it to break. So something like this is great. It's got a spring-loaded uh, uh, punch there, and then it also has a little razor for a seatbelt cutter. You can reach in and extricate somebody from a vehicle. So it's really good for egress or getting into a vehicle if you need to, not really active shooter related. Getting into the really active shooter part of this kit. In the main pocket here, I've basically stocked this with enough supplies to treat what I believe would be two uh, patients. So in here, I've got three cat tourniquets, really easily accessible. I have the orange ones. Like I'm trying to dispense with some of the GI Joe stuff. You know, you don't need black tourniquets in these environments most of the time. If you're here, you're not there confronting the active shooter. You're here to render aid. And most likely that active shooter has even either moved on uh, or they've been subdued by law enforcement. So that's really what this is made for. So we've got three cat tourniquets and I just have the Vertex Mac band, the full Mac band in there. You can get any number of things. You can even make your own, just sew some Velcro and elastic strips. It sticks right on there, really, really easy to get. And then I can pull these out individually. So you can store your tourniquets any number of ways. Now, the uh, in this pocket here, I've got some quick clot, some other uh, packing gauze. I basically have three things of gauze in there, one quick clot, 
Uh, and then I've got a handful of chest seals. You should be stocking a number of chest seals and pack gauze in these situations. Tourniquets are great in war zones because people have armor on. So usually when you have major trauma from gunshot wounds, they're more likely to have extremity trauma. In the civilian world, um, unless you live in a very, very interesting city, people aren't walking around with plate carriers. So most likely they're gonna be shot in the torso. That doesn't mean an extremity bleed can't happen. That's why I have tourniquets because they're really fast, but we might be doing more chest trauma, more abdominal trauma, things like that because they are not wearing that level of protection. So all of those go in this pocket and I just keep that open for easy accessibility. In this pocket, which normally would be considered like the tablet or iPad uh, pocket, I have two North American Rescue pressure bandages. You can do Olay's bandages. You can make any number of things work in here. Just something to wrap wound pack in or wrap the more minor injuries or even just apply pressure on an extremity injury. Once I've run out of tourniquets, you can use it for that. Now up here in the lid, I don't know if you can see it super well, I've got two nasal pharyngeal airways. Now I've kept standard adult sizes. You could differentiate this a little bit to have uh, a couple sizes smaller for your small female patients. They're not all military age males. I think it would be legitimate to carry some different um, sizes besides your 28 French. 28 French is what I had laying around, so I threw them in here. Now I've got four ARS needles, and this is an advanced skill, of course, so don't do this unless you're specifically trained to do it, but these are for your tension pneumothoraces. If I'm carrying chest seals, I like to have something to decompress, to decompress the chest because I'm expecting massive uh, chest trauma, uh, depending on what that is. Now, generally you can just burp a chest seal and it'll work fine, but there are periods where they will develop a tension pneumothorax. Now in the side, this is not really for your active shooter situations because most of the time uh, we're not going to be attempting resuscitation on your major traumatic arrests. If somebody's shot and they're dead, chances are they're going to stay dead no matter what you do. But if you just have one patient, they're down, it's a relatively safe situation, you don't need to do a rapid extrication, it's legitimate to try to do CPR, rescue breaths, you name it. And then in your run of the mill medical emergencies, you're riding the train and somebody goes down cardiac arrest, it's good to have uh, one of these. I've actually had that situation where I was walking in downtown Madison, uh, looked down and there was a guy overdosing right next to me and I, I didn't have a pocket shield. Um, so basically I waited till police showed up, they had a pocket mask and we did rescue breaths for this guy. So not even a CPR situation, but sometimes somebody's in respiratory arrest. Great to have a pocket mask and that just sits right on the side. Not something I'm gonna use a whole lot, however. Now, something that's really important and once again, Rogue Rescue has a great article on this is light. So I've just tucked a flashlight in there. There's a headlamp somewhere else in this kit that we'll get to, but this is just for illuminating targets, walking down a hallway. Uh, there's a lot of uses for a light and you can't treat what you can't see. Uh, especially if you're not training under low light environments, it's really great to have something like this. With a point and shoot flashlight, you can just take this, set it on the ground, and it's gonna give you a lot of ambient light to work by. Uh, good to have in any kind of medical kit you're doing. I've got a Sharpie over here for label, labeling tourniquets or writing notes. Uh, my hand becomes my notepad even in my professional life. Uh, so I really like having that available to me. Um, in the front pocket here, we've got a couple other supplies. So in here, I've got a headlamp. It's just a Princeton tack. I've got like five of these guys. Um, they're really bright. Uh, it's good to be able to see what you're looking at. So the flashlight I just showed you is excellent for point and shoot. This is really good for task oriented um, uh, work. So I'm gonna put that on my head. I can look around, um, see what I'm doing. I actually included PPE in this one. So I've got some gloves from North American Rescue uh, in here. They're packing them a little bit better so they're not coming out all crumpled, hard to put on. And then I'm carrying two space blankets for uh, heat loss prevention in the other pocket, which I think is really, really important for patients. Once again, has a lot of different uses beyond just the active shooter. Coming into the more of the Vertex specific um, pockets and features, and that's kind of why I like these bags. So number one is going to be this pocket here. So you can see it's not really a tactical bag, but if I do, if I am in a situation where I want to really ex uh, have some identification, you can roll this top flap down and you can have more of an overt uh, look to it. So I've got, you know, paramedic there for identification. I've got some uh, uh, X shears, trauma shears right there. And then I've got a glow stick for, uh, you can use glow, sorry, chem lights. Glow sticks is not very tactical sounding when you call that. It. It's a chem light and it's to mark patients, uh, mark entrances, things like that. 
useful tool, but not something I'm going to use a ton once again. So you can have this identification on there. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, if you're in an active shooter situation, um, this isn't really necessary. Uh, this might be necessary if there's like uh, a big scene going on and you're just trying to go around, be helpful. Police are trying to clear out a lot of people. It's good to have some kind of identification because they'll probably let you continue doing your work. Um, if you are a professional or have something here. As far as active shooter goes, you know, people like to have those uh, big identification sashes that are like CCW holder, uh, civilian. They're not going to see that. The contact teams aren't going to see that when they come in. If you're, if they come in and they see somebody, it doesn't matter what kind of sash they have on them, what kind of plate carrier, what it's labeled, can say special forces medic, and they're not going to care. They're going to come around the corner and you have a much increased chance of getting shot. So I like to keep things low pro, but this is a nice feature to have. Also, these are Molly. So if you did want to put like some IFACs here, you could do that um, and integrate some more kind of everyday carry things in the pack itself. This just pops up. There's also some room for like a stash pocket. If I want to throw some trash in there, I can. Now, finally, and probably the controversial uh, part of this active shooter kit is this pack is made for concealed carry holders. And like I just said, I'm not a huge fan of somebody running into a building with a gun trying to confront an active shooter. Now, you definitely can. There's definitely a time and a place for that. Um, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, but I am saying that you should make that decision for yourself. Chances are, if you have a gun out, like I said, when police come around the corner, you are probably going to get shot. And it's happened time and time again to off-duty officers uh, and some concealed carry holders. It's very tragic. However, you have to weigh those consequences with the possibility of being able to end a violent encounter. How I built this is less for confronting the violent shooter and more for uh, being in a situation, taking care of somebody, and then all of a sudden the perpetrator comes around the corner and you have to defend yourself. That's my thought process with this. So in this back pocket, I have actually stored uh, my firearm and then uh, two extra uh, magazines of ammo. So this just Velcros onto the back. This is a tier one uh, concealed holster here. It's a Kydex holster. Uh, Vertex makes something that you can actually clip your normal CCW into it. Uh, you can also just take any, any old holster, put some Velcro on the back and it's going to stick. So that's in here. And the thought process, like I said, is that you have this on you and then somebody comes around the corner, you can draw your gun and defend yourself, um, and defend your patients as well. So you have that in this pocket. And then I've also added, um, some body armor to this. So this has a uh, premier body armor. It's specifically cut for this sling. And what this will allow you to do is actually wear this with, for some protection. Now, like most uh, Vertex bags, this does have a way you can take this and put your arm through it and it can kind of be used as a shield. But I was kind of thinking about the uh, usability of that. And if you're getting shot at, unless you've got a lot of training and you're confronting somebody just right up like that, number one, uh, you're doing one arm shooting, which is less accurate than having two arms presented um, to the target. And number two, there's a chance that you're gonna flinch and be moving this away from your vital organs. So how I've set this up is the sling is pretty small and this will allow me to throw this around my neck. I can work out of the bag and then draw a gun quickly, present it, but it's still offering me some ballistic protection around my vital organs. So my heart, my lungs, my vena cava, uh, and all of that great stuff. Like I said, I really like the fact that this is a low profile uh, bag. It doesn't have a lot of tactical stuff on it. Like somebody in the know that knows Vertex products knows that somebody carrying this probably is an EDC nerd like I am. Um, but it's really low pro and at first glance, you're not gonna identify it as a tactical bag whatsoever. And then it does have the increased capability of being armor protected and carrying a firearm. Like I said though, how you carry your firearm is up to you. Um, whether you like off body or not, just be aware if somebody is trying to steal from your bag and they get this open, they can steal your gun. So you have to be really careful with your off body carry when you do it. This bag does have rooms for a small lock, um, but that's also going to slow down your draw. So like everything, it's a give and take, use your head, um, and decide what's, uh, important to you going into this. If you have any questions, comments, snide remarks, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.